fun to find out what a small world it is. Oh, you live in New York? East side, west side. Which building? Oh, oh, I know somebody in your building. And just how fun that is. And then at the same time, addresses can speak about you. Oh, you're in that building. Uh, and so, you know, I, I watched this happen where uh, somebody who I knew was an inheritor because she had shared with that with me in personal confidence um, was having this lovely interaction and somebody she spoke to was a realtor in um, the city where she worked and where she lived. And when the, the realtor found out where she lived, um, she knew the building, knew how much a um, uh, residence in that building had just sold for and immediately... Uh, this woman felt and her, you know, it was immediately like, oh, how many bedrooms and which floor? And, and she was, she just felt herself being placed into a category and she felt how people at the table started to, uh, think about her and look at her differently. And I watched it. Like she went from being, um, a, a woman at a, a spa having a great time working out with somebody to all of a sudden, um, Wow, you're here for two weeks. You must have a lot of disposable income. Oh, you're in that building. You must have. And I just I watched her physically shrink, and and as these questions started happening, and we had some great conversations afterwards about what that was like for her and how she wants to show up in a way where she can feel really great about who she is and what she has, and at the same time um, feeling very negatively impacted by the the way that people were perceiving her that she didn't have any say over. And I know, Jamie, um, you have a lot to say on this subject. Yeah, I mean, I, I this, this dilemma is something that comes up for me with almost every client that I work with. And it's, you know, how do you be honest and authentic in the world and also be able to manage your own boundaries of how much you want to share and how much you don't want to share. Um, and I'm just struck, again, you know, um, I, I haven't until recently thought of connection between being an inheritor, which, which I also am, and uh, being now um, someone who's dealing with cancer, but it, it also has that same feeling of with my hair when I walk out somewhere, it makes a statement about me. And, you know, I'm 45 years old, so it's not hard to understand that there's most likely I'm, you know, suffering from cancer, and it's not just a hairstyle change, considering it was so drastic. Um, in a way, I think that that's very much the same with inheritors. They don't have a sign on their back that says they're inheritors, but there are these certain questions that start to bring that forward. And when you lose that sense of choice of what you reveal about yourself or how you want people to know you, you know, that the natural experience of that is to feel, um, you know, that not Jamie, safe. Jamie, it's um, really hard to hear you. Um, uh, see yeah. if you can speak in a little bit more clearly. Um, okay. Uh, have that. You don't want to have... Uh, um, we'll see if we can get you on here. What, uh, just to recap what Jamie said, um, we've been, I've just been lo enjoying listening to her. She was talking about um, this dilemma that can happen when we um, we uh, need to know like how honest and authentic we can be um, while also managing our boundaries regarding how much we want to share openly, how not. Um, I'll keep going, Jamie. We, we're, we're okay. We're able to hear you. You can hear so. me better now. Okay. Yep. So one of the things that I'm really learning, and it's amazing to be, you know, we learn things in our bodies at different levels, in our brain, in our body. But I'm really learning, and this is what I talk about with my clients all the time. That I think where the line starts is that each person has to find the place that they're comfortable in their own skin, even if it's not what they want to say, once those questions start, they need to start to develop the answers that work for them. I worked with a couple for a while, and we used to have a sort of a running joke that they could even tell people that they robbed a bank if they told them with complete conviction and they felt comfortable, people would stop asking questions. And, we, you know, we used to joke, just go out and do an experiment, say different things. And they started to take it on as a game 
And when they found that they were able to find the place that they were comfortable, then the question stopped. Because sometimes what happens is people pick up on your discomfort of answering the question or like you're holding something back. They don't really know what it is. They don't know that they're that they're pointing at a sensitive spot, but they see that there's something there. They sense it. So they keep asking. But when you give a very firm answer, whatever your answer is, whatever you choose, I'm able to come, you know, and live in this building because um, of an inheritance I got or because of work that I did in the past. Whatever somebody chooses to say, if you say it with comfort, I noticed it today as I took off my wig and I walked out, when I walked in the street with confidence, people didn't look at me. When I walked in the street uncomfortable, people stared at me. So I think part of the place that I usually start, and it, uh, I'd be curious some way for you too, how you work with clients is around helping people get comfortable about who they are and what their situation is. Yes. Such a great analogy. Um, I'm just so struck by what you said, and I want to just give that a moment before we go into that, my response to that. Because um, you know, there's the physical, uh, visceral experience of seeing somebody who's um, you know gone from having a full head of hair to being bald, and that elicits an immediate re- response internally because there's such a visual. And I think one of the things that we're speaking about here is this hidden aspect of the self that's so defined by, um, you know, whether it's our name or our, uh, the money in our bank account or where we live, like pieces of us that aren't necessarily automatically seen as a result of us, um, who we are physically, that as they come forward, as they emerge, um, people immediately, the mind just automatically wants to put somebody in a box, wants to... Um, oh, now I know who you are. Oh, that changes who you are. And that's the most, uh, I think, uh, one of the most painful and challenging things that inheritors can feel uh, in terms of, yeah, you think about me and see me one way now, and as soon as you know this about me, I know you're going to change what you think and feel about me. And, you know, we both have seen this in terms of um, the avoidance of uh, bringing somebody to your home like either your childhood home or uh, the home that you choose to live in and enjoying that and having that capacity to live in a really lovely way and yet, oh, the moment somebody sees this, they're automatically going to know something about me. And I wonder if you could speak into that, Jamie, because you've had direct experience of that personally. I will, absolutely. I would also like to um, to say that... Um, one of the most painful questions, I think, and it, it's a common question, but it can, you don't even think it would be painful, is that when you're at a party, almost the second thing we say to somebody after we say, or maybe the third, what's your name, where are you from, what do you do? Boom. It's right there, you know, for for inheritors who choose not to work. That is the worst. That's like the kiss of death question. Um, and I want to talk into my story, but I'm also getting a note that we have a ton of questions. So I want to make sure that we make space for our questions, Emily. Um, and I'm wondering if you have the questions coming up on your side. No, I think you're the lucky one today. <laughs> so bring them on. I, I, just have, I just have a little note saying that there's questions, but I don't have the questions. So you know, oh, if you wow. can send us okay. the question, we would love to be putting people's questions on. Um, And in the meantime, I can tell um, quickly about my story that I had the experience um, with, you know, my first love of my life at college. Um, We'd been dating for a while, and uh, I decided to bring him home for the weekend. And we drove up my driveway, and he said, wait a second, stop, stop. I said, what's wrong? He said, wait a second, you know, like, he was very disoriented. We've been dating for a couple months. Um, and he was said, this isn't, like, he couldn't take in my house just from the driveway. And it was one of those perfect moments where you actually come up with a statement that you want to say right then and there. And I looked at him and I said, Kevin, I am the same person I was 15 minutes ago. 
you just learned more information about me, but I haven't changed. And he was able to switch it in a minute and see. His seeing the house I lived in didn't make me a different person. But it had, the moment he drove in, it, all of his voices about who he was in comparison and who I was shifted. So we had to do a lot of talking about it. But, you know, it was just that sense of the outside of my house all of a sudden gave him a very different perspective of me. That's so well said. And uh, it just speaks right into that clarity of who you were in that moment made it so that he could relax and know that, oh, while there's new information and data coming in, uh, who I have right here with me is the person that I, I knew already. So, yeah, that's really great. And it became uh, a terrific compliment to me that, um, again, it wasn't like a bald head. It wasn't something that I wore on my sleeve. He had no idea about this aspect of me. Often um, clients tell us so much that if their friends knew they were an inheritor, then they would believe you know, that they weren't good people or that they had it too easy, that they did not, all these things. He didn't believe any of those because he didn't know that piece of information of me. So it was so nice to see, it, you know, that wasn't even part of how he considered me before. And then we got to work it through afterwards. But, you know, that, that sense of not wanting to bring people to your home, particularly for our clients who are in high school, who are in college for sure. Graduate school seems to be particularly challenging and when they're young and first married because those are the periods when, um, you know, after in the 30s, depending where you're living, it starts to get a little less clear. People have started to make their own money. So if you live in a big house, it's a little unclear. Um, but um, those, those earlier ages are really challenging. Well, great. Well, um, they, we're, we're still sorting out where the questions are, and I wanted to respond to your question earlier because I think one of the things that we have to offer our listeners more than anything is uh, some tools that can really make a difference for them in these situations. So again, if you're listening and you want to join in, you can call 347-215-6138. And you can also email us at listeners at sylviaglobal.com or go to the Facebook page, Sylvia Global or uh, Wealth Legacy Group, and you can post your questions there. Uh, one of the things that uh, I have been working uh, pretty successfully with, with inheritors, with couples that are dealing with well, how to field these questions is to use humor. And I loved how you talked, uh, Jamie, about of trying on different ways of relating and responding. And what I do is we do um, some playful ways of responding from the different money types. So uh, in the course of a session, uh, we'll play with, okay, so you're asked, you know, um, or, or you hear some sort of comment about, oh, wow, you must have a lot of disposable income or, you know, are you a trust fund baby or, um, wow, you live there, you know, whatever it might be and then have the person try on what's it like to respond to that from the place of the innocent and uh, kind of being shy and, and demure and, you know, oh, I don't know, like just playing with innocent versus the fool, like, oh, yeah, you know, won the lottery and the, you know, did you, did you throw it through your sweepstakes entry? Because, boy, it paid off for me, like how a fool would be somebody who would come into money versus... uh um, uh, going into maybe the tyrant and say, yeah, you know, I, I had to swindle quite a few people and, you know, I had to lay off a number, but I got this place. Like, just try, trying on the different personalities, the different types, the creator, artist, you know, uh, you know, I, it was an amazing thing, you know, came up with this idea. Uh, you put it in the post-its, well, like, on the, the par with that, just playing. 